Hello everyone, my name is Joe Royo with Muffin Express Games and we're starting a series of tutorials here. This one is going to be on graphics, specifically for game programming. Uh, we're going to start in 2D, go over a lot of basic concepts, uh, eventually get more advanced, end up in 3D, and we'll be talking about an array of topics that will really help you get a solid foundation on graphics programming. Um, Who's this for? I would say <clears throat> I would expect you to have uh, C++ programming knowledge, much of it. A lot of linear algebra will be used, so uh, know your vectors, know your matrices. I will try and kind of recap on the topics as we hit them on some of these mathematical concepts, but I'm not going to go too much in depth, uh, so you may find yourself pausing it and researching concepts in case, uh, in case you don't know that specific type of material. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm doing this mainly because <clears throat> I like the lecture resource a lot on the web. Uh, people like Patrick JMT, Khan Academy really helped me in a lot of my math concepts as I was going through um, high school and the earlier parts of college. So I'd like to do the same thing for some programming. So hopefully uh, people will find this useful. Uh, also, for me, I'm still a student. I'm going into my junior year. and I find it better that I can retain a lot of the old information uh, when I teach it. So I would like to do the same thing. This helps me a lot. Uh, you know, you take a class and when it's over you forget, you know, a small amount of it. So it's nice to go back, revisit it, and really uh, make sure the foundation is strong. So let's, uh, let's get started by just talking about what graphics really is. Uh, it, graphics is mostly math. So if you're not strong with math, you're going to have trouble uh, doing graphics. If you think about it, you're trying to display uh, geometry onto a two-dimensional screen, especially when you get into 3D, you start talking about taking a three-dimensional world and projecting it on a 2D plane. So there's a lot of interesting math involved in that. That's what I find the most interesting. After all, there's a lot of math in almost every avenue of computer science, so if you're not comfortable with math, you're probably not in the right field anyway, so it shouldn't really have to be said uh, so much. So let's move over to the whiteboard. And let's talk about the simplest thing. Uh, this is what every piece of you know graphics, anything we can talk about graphics, we can't even begin to discuss it without talking about a pixel, right? So what's a pixel? I don't know, a dot. Sure, is that a pixel to you? I guess. Uh, a pixel really is just the, a picture element. That is uh, what it stands for. You think of it as the single elements that when combined together uh, can display an entire image to the human eye uh, on a screen. Specifically a pixel you know, is a square element here that's very small that is filled with color data. So it's going to be green. Combinations of red, green, and blue if the pixel is lit up. So I'll show a quick image of a monitor. So let's say we're looking at the monitor, right? And you have this fantastic resolution monitor, like so. Let's say these are all of the pixels of the monitor. Now let's look at the monitor from the side. So this is our side view, and it's a CRT because you're cool and old school like that. Let's put you in front of it too. You're sitting down and you're playing your video game. All right, so with the CRT monitor, um, there's like picture it like a like a cannon, so to speak. All right, really, it's a cathode ray. Okay, so here's your cannon, and it shoots electrons. Okay, there's like a, a coating of what is it phosphor uh, on the screen here. And when it's hit by electrons, it causes it to illuminate light. Okay, and depending on how it's hit, you know the light is bent to display certain types of red, green, blue values. Okay, so the way that this cathode ray works is it's going to shoot the top left of the screen. So now we'll come back over here. It's going to start right here. It's going to shoot electrons at each pixel in a row and work its way to the bottom left of the screen. So it's really just it's going to draw it one by one, one at a time, picking 
the color data as it goes, filling it up, and you get the point. Obviously, it doesn't have to be the same color for each row. I'm just lazy like that. And notice the way I'm drawing it is exactly how the order in which it's going to do it as well. Eventually, it ends here at the bottom. When it reaches the bottom, the bottom it's going to send what's called a V blank, which we'll talk about in a minute. And that basically means it's resetting. So it's it's here, and it's actually going to stop shooting, realign itself back up to the top of the screen up here, right? And then it's going to begin filling in the lines again until it reaches the bottom right, and then it's going to reset and start over again. All right, so that's essentially how it fills up the pixels. Okay, now another thing that a lot of people are familiar with when they do, you know, a lot of gamers rather, is the term V-Sync. So we'll talk real quickly about what that means and what screen tearing is. So here's our monitor. Let's say we have an image of something that we're hoping to draw on the screen. There we go. This is our image, this circle, and let's say that he's moving to the left, okay, in the game. So if he's moving to the left, the way uh, that screen tear can occur and what it actually is, is that this gun, this cathode ray, cannot be controlled by your application. You don't get to tell it, hey, you know, you're halfway into drawing, you know, draw, 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 stop here. But why don't you start back over because I've got a new image for you. All right, it can't do that. It's not going to. It's always going to finish what it started, get to the end here, send the V-blank signal, and then start back over. So what happens if you send it new data while it's halfway through, or I mean part way through, it doesn't have to be half obviously, and what you're going to end up seeing on the screen is the following. So let's say it's firing off, you know, it's, it's pixels here. Obviously it'll be doing it from top down, left, right, but you get the point. When you get here, let's say halfway, we send it new data. Well, it's not going to stop, as I had just mentioned. It's going to keep going, but it's going to go with that new data that you gave it. So it's really, and as I said, the circle is moving to the left. Yeah. So in the next image, it has moved to the left. So what ends up drawing is this little guy. And as you can see, this, this deviation here, this is where the screen tear comes in. This is why when you're playing a game, sometimes, and you don't have V-Sync on, uh, you can actually see these lines show up uh, in the actual screen. That's because you have a different image on top than on the bottom. And because the images are so close together, frame by frame, it almost looks like there's just kind of lines uh, drawing across the screen. But really, it's separate images being rendered from one part of the screen to the next part. The way that that's solved, uh, in a nutshell, is we do we buffer. So let's say we have these uh, these buffers over here. So these are a little like, and by buffer, of course, I just mean storage in so many words, right? A buffer is just a, a way of storing something. You're buffering something, you're waiting for later, that kind of a thing. So this is, let's say, two-dimensional array of, of pixels. This, there's, let's say we have two of them, and uh, we begin to fill it with data. So what we're really doing is, let's say this one already has data. So let me put some data in it. This is something we already had before. So let's say we told it it was these pixels. Okay. So we're going to send this one to be the image that's rendered. All right. So this is the one being drawn on the screen. Instead of drawing to the same buffer, we draw to another one on the side. So while this one is actually being drawn on the screen with the cathode gun, we're filling another one with different data, like so. Now if VSync wasn't on, as soon as we were done filling this data, we would swap the pointer to these buffers. Okay, we would basically just like nix this one and point to this one instead, which causes the exact problem that I was mentioning, where the gun is halfway through and it gets this new data. So what we do instead is we actually wait. We finish this one, right? And we don't do anything with it. We wait for this V blank. So I was saying this would be important later, and it is. We wait for this signal from 
the system. When we get it, that's when we make the swap. Okay, so we get a V blank, which says I'm done rendering an entire image. We swap the buffer to this one. We begin drawing this one. And when that happens, as soon as that occurs, we clear this one right here. We clear it and we start filling the one that's not being used right now with new data. Then we wait for a V blank, right? Then we swap, sorry. Then we swap the buffer to this one. Okay, so we're basically just swapping buffers back and forth. We draw to the one that's not being uh, displayed on the screen, and then we swap them. If VSync is on, then we wait for a V blank, and then we then we swap them. Otherwise, we swap them immediately. That's why that's an option because if you think about it, it's kind of in a way it's expensive because we're waiting, right? If we have to wait, then that's time that we could have spent rendering uh, yet another image. So. We give the user the option if they don't care about screen tearing and they they want uh, it to display images faster, then they have that freedom. All right, so let's move on quickly to uh, math versus graphics. And what I mean by that is pretty simple. Say we have uh, our axes here is x and y, naturally, and let's say we have a line. So here's our line. We know that you know the definition of any kind of a line, and I don't mean a straight line, is that for every x, if we give it a function of x, we will get some y back, right? I'm not talking about like mx plus y equals mx plus b or anything like that. I'm just saying that there is some function of x that will return a y. So for every x value, there corresponds a y value. For every x value, there corresponds a y value yeah well also know that x right and y there exists from negative infinity to infinity right the real number system allows us to pick any number an infinite value of numbers and we will get another one back well that's clearly an issue because we just discussed right that we have this two-dimensional array of pixels so all we have are these indexes that we can either set a color in or not. So we're looking at the, the challenge that we're going to overcome later is how do we take an infinitely defined mathematical object, right, and represent it in a finite way. And here's an example of what could happen. So let's say we have our pixels that can be set like so. And let's take that line I'll grab the same color. Okay, here's our line. So this is our line as defined by its mathematical representation. And here's what we do with it. So just by looking at it, we can decide certain things. Let's say uh, this one looks like it's in that pixel enough. So we'll set that one. We'll set this one too. I don't know, this one looks like it's touching the border. Do we set this one or not? I don't know, it's a decision. We could either make it, let's not make it right now. We'll set this one. This looks good enough. Let's not set this, and let's set this. So really, this infinite line will look like this when we're finished. Or, it's up to us, what if it looks like this? If we just set every single pixel that this line was touching, We'd have a lot of issues where this line would look really thick in some places, very thin in other places. That could pose a lot of problems. So we definitely need to be aware of that. And this is where we're going to learn these algorithms that determine uh, what pixels we set and which ones we don't based on this uh, infinite representation of a line. Okay, and we have to make sure that it's uh, it's cheap. It's not very computational. You know, we don't want to waste a bunch of computation making decisions about where we're going to set it. So we're going to learn different line algorithms that will basically handle which pixels we set. But this is essentially what we're going to get. Lines are infinite, uh, and in graphics, lines are finite. So we need to be able to determine them. And that brings me to my last thing. So we're saying here, because I had mentioned that the gun starts at the top left and it goes line by line, each line from left to right of the monitor, this is called a scan line. 
scan line. So if you're familiar with the term uh, scan conversion or have heard it before and didn't know what it meant, it is just a fancy word for drawing pixels to a screen. Okay, So there are three uh, words that are synonymous in graphics. It's uh, scan conversion, drawing, and rasterizing. Those are all they all mean the same thing. It's the act of deciding the pixels that are to be set. Um, and that's essentially all that is. So, you know, sometimes we slap some fancy terms on stuff, but at the end of the day, it's uh, once you take away the magic, it's just drawing, nothing special. So that covers it today. Uh, it's an overview just simply of what a pixel is, how pixels uh, work in your monitor. There are definitely different technologies that do this, but this is the easiest example to kind of help uh, aid in the tutorial. Uh, what a V blank is, the thing that the, the gun sends every time it reaches the end saying that it's finished rendering an entire image. What screen tearing is, how we fix it using VSync, right? What buffering is as well, and how we represent, not how, but the fact that we do represent infinite lines or infinite images or infinite geometric shapes as finite values in a two-dimensional array of pixels when we set our colors. All right, so uh, next time we'll uh, cover some new topics, probably the graphics pipeline, and I'll see you then.